Hi, it's Dot from DotsTrot.com and this morning I am making one of the staples I always try to have in my kitchen. Um, it adds great flavor to sauces, to um, meats, to marinades, and that is roasted garlic. And here I've got a, bake, a baker's dozen of garlic cloves. And what I'm going to do is just show you how I roast them. It'll be a really short, quick video, um, but it's something that you can do. And what's wonderful, you're, you're th probably thinking, oh my God, that's a lot of garlic. This is really easy for me to go through in a three month period. So, and I do. Uh, and a wonderful thing about garlic is that after you roast them, they keep um, in the freezer. So you can keep them for at least three months in the freezer. You'll definitely use them and go through them. But let's go ahead and get started. The first, um, just to give you an idea, I got all my garlic. I'm using two different types of oil this time around. On half, six of them will have uh, some MCT oil, and the other six will, or 13 will have just basic olive oil, pure olive oil. And I'm going to sprinkle them with some Himalayan, uh, pink Himalayan salt. But what I'm going to do right now, the first step you do with your garlic is you want to peel them. And I've got most of them peeled. You really want to take the skins off. I've got two more to go. And all you're going to do really is just take it and just rip off that little top. And you're just going to use a little force, just use your thumbs. And you want to get as much of the skin off, the papers off as you possibly can. Um, the reason why I do this, it just, the wonderful thing about garlic is once you roast it, the whole clove, uh, you, you can just squeeze it right into your dish and the garlic just pops out, but you need to take the excess papers off. Otherwise you're going to get some of them into your dish and you don't want that. I've, I did, I made that mistake once when I, my first batch of roasted garlic, I won't ever do it again. So you just want to take off the papers and, and don't worry about, you know, you, you don't want to go too hard because you don't want them to pop off. You just take off what you can, uh, what you can get off. Like uh, I'll give you an example this particular piece of garlic right here. If you notice, I got one missing, one missing there. Well, they just sort of popped off. Um, and you know, I'm not going to throw that gar garlic away. I'm going to just put it in my little garlic hose and I'll use it when I, when my recipe calls for fresh garlic. The other thing that happened with one of them, as you can see here, if you can sort of see that, I'm not sure if you can on camera, it is, um, a little bit, um, damaged, not very good. So I caught that and I just sort of plucked that out. So, but that's one of the things you can do. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and finish peeling these puppies. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and um, start getting, prepping the garlic ready to roast. All right, now we're going to start prepping the garlic. And what we're going to do is you're going to cut off the top, oh, one quarter to one half inch of the garlic clove. And that's sort of, that's basically what it's going to look like. Um, what I do is sometimes you've got these uh, if you look at this particular bulb, uh, some of these little cloves are down there. So when you cut off that top part, you're going to miss those. I just use a paring knife at that point and I gently trim off the tops around in case my um, uh, chef's knife doesn't catch those. So again, all you're going to do is, and that actually, what, what might happen sometimes is a little one might pop off doesn't matter. Um, I trimmed it off. It is going to go into my roasting pan to roast with the rest of the garlic and it'll keep as well. So not that big of a deal. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you. You want to basically just, again, you want to make sure these stay steady. You don't want any chopped fingers and you just slice right through. And again, that's one of the reasons, like I said, you want to uh, trim off the papers because they get in the way of goodness, tasty goodness. So like this one's a little bit loose. It's probably going to pop off. That's okay. What I'm going to do though, is go ahead and trim these up. Uh, the smaller cloves up that didn't get cut again, just gently. I'm just going to cut right through. I don't want to cut the, the clove that's right next to it, the, in the, in the middle, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that. See, not that big of a deal. You just sort of cut right through and you're going to get the rest of these and make it so that the oil, you want the oil to touch all of the cloves. So that's really important to cut off the top. So you want that oil to soak into the garlic. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and finish up the rest of these. When we come back, we'll start seasoning the garlic. All right, my garlic is chopped. I still have 10 fingers all intact, yay. Um, I will say, if you've got some of the garlic, garlic cloves, and I have a couple of them where they were so tiny and so small, 
I didn't worry about chopping off the tops because the garlic, since you're leaving the root on, the garlic isn't necessarily as stable on a chopping board as I would love. So, you know, just do what you need to do to get as much garlic as you can, but you don't have to worry about every nook and piece. I've got a couple of them in here, which were so tiny, it wasn't really worth the trouble. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna season um, my garlic. And what I'm gonna do is I'm using MCT oil and olive oil. Now, MCT oil is a trick I learned um, reading uh, Maria Emmerich's uh, book on uh, low carb cooking and I'll link to it below. And it's a great idea because what you're doing is you're adding um, a healthy fat that for those of you who are doing low carb and you're trying to get into ketosis, this is MCT oil is the one way you can get into ketosis pretty quickly if you use it, but you use it sparingly. You don't use, just don't drink it all down. You'll get sick from it. Um, it just gives you a little bit of a belly ache. Um, the other thing I'm using, which is what I traditionally would use is, um, uh, pure olive oil, which um, I don't use extra virgin because that's not really good for cook for cooking per se. You can eat it like as a salad dressing, but for when I'm basting or sauteing lightly, I use um, pure olive oil. And then I said, uh, we're going to top it off with some sea salt. So first what I'm going to do, I've got two t tablespoons of MCT oil in here. And what I'm going to do is just take a, t uh, a teaspoon um, and I'm just going to drizzle it on each garlic each head, each bulb of garlic. I'm just sort of putting it on and I want to get it all over. And each one gets a, uh, roughly a tablespoon since there's two, a teaspoon. There's two tablespoons in here. That means three teaspoons make up one tablespoon. So that's what I'm doing. And just put it over each head. Now, MCT oil, I don't normally cook with. Again, I was speaking about cooking oils. I don't normally cook with. However, the difference with MCT oil is that I have my oven temperature here at, at a low setting, so it's I'm not going to hit the smoke point. I've got my oven uh, preheated right now to um, 100, uh, 350 degrees. And what you're going to do is when the garlic goes in, you want it to at least cook for about 45 minutes, and then you start checking every 10 minutes. What you want to do is you want to make sure go ahead and start the olive oil. You want to make sure the center cloves are very, very soft. You can pierce it with a paring knife. Um, when you got that, the garlic is ready. However, what I like to do, I like to go a little bit longer um, than 45 minutes. And I start checking about every 10 minutes because I don't want to burn it. And the reason why is the longer you roast it, uh, you get wonderful flavor because that's when the caramelization starts happening. Um, with your garlic and it just tastes fantastic, but you don't want to burn it. So you do want to be careful. Here's this guy. Let me pour up the rest on here. Just drizzle it on. All right. So I have my olive oil and my MCT oil. Now I'm going to go ahead and season it with Himalayan salt. You can also use sea salt if you like or kosher salt. It really is up to you. Whoop. I want to make sure, you know, just a little bit. I'm not going to over salt them. I think one got slammed. So I'm going to wipe that off a little bit. But otherwise, I sort of do it again high because that gives it an e a better spread, so to speak. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the oven, 45 minutes, and then at that point I'm going to start checking it. Um, 45 minutes, isn't, like I said, is a good point because they start getting soft. What will dictate how long your garlic stays in there is how old the garlic is, how, um, and just sort of the size of the garlic can dictate that it stays in longer or shorter periods of time. So that's something to keep an eye on. So 45 minute, again, is a really good point uh, to see whether or not there's some that, that are ready to come out or if you want to let some go a little bit longer. And again, for caramelization, I would say add another 15, 20 minutes, but just watch it closely. So this is going to go in the oven. Mm, it smells so good in my house. I took the garlic out. Um, when you're cooking this for about 45 minutes, I cook some a little bit longer, but when you're cooking this for that period of time, your house is going to smell wonderfully delicious. My husband had a retreat outside to his deck because the smell just got to him. He just kept drooling and he had to leave. Uh, but it, it, it is a wonderful smell. So I hope you really enjoy it. If you give this recipe a shot, um, if you take a look at some of the garlic, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but some parts of it, you'll see this dark coloring. It's sort of like this ooziness coming out of the garlic. That's the caramelization that's happening. Um, and that's what you really want because it adds that extra level of flavor. Um, 
What I did was at about the 45 minute mark, I took two out because they were pretty much all done. Uh, I left the rest in and I kept checking, like I said before, about every 10 minutes um, just to see how things were going. I didn't want them uh, um, overcooking or anything. On a few of them, I did add a little bit extra um, olive oil on my olive oil ones. Um, they just got really greedy and I needed a little extra push. So I did that. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let them cool I have my little freezer bag all set and I put today's date on it. These are gonna go in the freezer bag. They're gonna go in the freezer. They last for three months. So that's an awesome benefit with garlic is that it does survive the freezer. Uh, and then all you do, you should take it out and you can just warm it um, at a low temperature in the oven just to warm it for maybe about 15 minutes and it defrosts right there. Um, and then all you do when you need it for your dish, you just squeeze it on. Uh, it just, everything pops out. If you notice, whoops, one of them fell out. This one squeezed out itself. So um, I, that won't go into the freezer. Uh, I'll probably, well, my husband, I think, wants to snap that one up. So, so but anyway, it's um, really easy to make. Uh, you'll definitely liven up the dishes. Um, if you want to know, uh, one bulb is probably about two to three fresh um, um, minced garlic as far as um, intensity of flavor. So it does minimize it a bit, but you do have to make sure if you add a full bulb, you actually count the carbs. And I'll have that listed below with the recipe. Uh, if you like what you see, go ahead and click on the thumbs up, uh, subscribe and share with your friends. And let me know some of the staples that you have to have in your house for your cooking. Uh, what types of things you love. I know one of them is my tomato sauce recipe with that this actually goes into. So this is actually a little bit more important than a tomato one. Um, but let me know what, um, what, uh, what things you can't go without as far as food items in your kitchen. I'd be real curious to see. Just put them in the comments bo box below. And until then, I'll see you next time.